I'm Scott L. Miller. It's the 1st of August, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life, living in Leon, Nicaragua. But today we are in Managua. It is the day of the Ipico. That is the big horse show that goes on all over the country. We filmed a few of them, but we're here in the capital for the big one. There are just crowds everywhere. We've just gotten here. It is currently actually a little bit after four, so we're waiting for things to really get started, but they pick up pretty soon. So we're gonna get to bringing you what we can of the Ipico right after the bump. Here for the Managua Ipico 2023. We are downtown in the middle of the city and we're bringing you guys along. I did basically no shooting on the spot for a couple reasons. Uh, one is that we've had a lot of audio issues recently and I didn't want to take any chances, but I do want to report I didn't use the lavalier and everything worked flawlessly. So is it the lavalier or is it the lavalier connection? I don't know, but the media kit with its built-in microphone worked the whole time. Check out that food. So we arrived at about 3.30 and the Ipico strangely takes place pretty late in the day everywhere that we do it. This is our third place doing it this season, but Managua is way bigger than anywhere else we've been. Nagarote is like 35,000 people, Leon is about 300,000 people, and Managua is 1.3 million people. This is a way, way bigger place. It was neat walking down these roads, because we drive these roads, these are boulevards, let me point out. This is uh, triple lane, one direction, those trees on the right are the divider, and then there's another three lanes over there. This is mid-city big boulevards that are blocked off for the Ipico and in a lot of different directions. Uh, it was a very overcast and it looks rainier than it actually was. There were a few drips, but that's about it. That is Parque de las Madres uh, with the big arches in the background, kind of off to the left. Uh, should you want to check on a map and see where we are, uh, that's, that's this area we're heading down. Um, so this was weird. They put a giant fence down the middle of this boulevard. So if you went down on this side of it, you had no way to get to the other side. And the other side was a little bit busier. So we had a problem of trying to figure out what we were going to do there so we had to walk down we had to walk all the way back and go the other way but everywhere in this downtown area is full of these new stands that are popping up now notice that's in front of a bank so they just put in these little little areas for people to go drink and uh you, there's the parque de los madres again this is where we circled around and went back to the other side of the road um so all over the place in this downtown area is uh all of these uh, little pop-up bars that have that have come everywhere it's it's really interesting how that works so the capacity for drinking at this party is is intense like they really uh add like a hundred percent of the bar capacity of the entire city just to the parade route so people are out all day at these pop-up bars at like big official ones with live bands playing djs dance parties pool parties bouncy houses you name it this is a city-wide party and today's a holiday for the city of managua so everyone is off work the rest of the country is not off but people come from all over the country uh to come do this like it's a big thing people get dressed up you can see the cowboy hats everywhere like people don't wear i mean people do wear cowboy hats in nicaragua but not like this like people really go all out everybody gets dressed up they get the hats they get the boots they do the whole thing and the and starting at around about 2 30 or 3 o'clock it's just this kind of loose procession of horses and ranches and cows and whatever just coming through the streets and a lot of people walk along with it um, and then we've got the Tonya display so every one of the Ipico's Tonya the big national beer company uh, comes out and puts on a show and this is way bigger here in Managua than it was in Nagarote or Leon uh, first of all there's these uh, uh, puppets going down the street which are you can see they say Tonya on the back of them these are similar to the Gigantes, but it's a little bit different. Uh, but there, it's some weird thing that, that Tonya does to, to kick it off. So they're at the beginning of the procession. And for the most part, this isn't a parade like a normal parade, not like you would think of. It's more of a very loose collection of items going down the street. And instead of everyone facing the parade for a short period of time, watching everyone go by and then being done, it's a ton of people throwing parties along the parade route 
and the parade route is very loose and is more of just kind of to give a cohesiveness to the people partying all along it. So you can walk with it, you can move from place to place. It's like it keeps going in circles around the city, it goes on all day. It's totally different than America thinks of it. So these are the actual Tonya floats, and they're more or less the only company that actually has floats. Mostly it's just people on horses, sometimes a truck goes by. They and they had one float in the other. Uh, the other parades, these are the Tonya girls, and they uh, just take that one float through, and it's a really big deal. We showed it in the other parades, but in this one, they had several floats, one right after another. I can only imagine these are the ones that were at all the different parades. You notice they are hooked together, so they're all moving in a very cohesive line because uh, they're basically like eight trucks tied together. Uh, and so it's, it's kind of interesting what it is is they have one truck, which is a huge music truck. You can see all the speakers and everything. That's playing the sound. It has all the, the lights and the, the, that's a giant power generator. Um, I want to point out this big horse symbol is called the Machimoto, and that is a symbol of the uh, literary work El Guiguense, which is one of the most important literary works from Nicaragua and actually predates the co uh, colonization. So it goes back to indigenous times, but of course it's been updated uh, as that was an oral tradition. But that's what that symbol is, is one of the characters from El Guaguense and more of the Tonya girls here. Uh, and so you see a lot of that horse symbology in everything in Nicaragua, but of course he is the literary sponsor of the Ipico, obviously. So that is what that is, that is why you see it. So Tonya really just goes all out and is the only major sponsor of this entire parade. So nearly everything you see is sponsored by Tonya. Every bar, every pop-up, every uh, DJ, every live band, everything in the actual uh, parade. You'll notice they have to actually, they do this for everything. You see these people do this all the time. They go out with these long poles and lift up the, the power lines so that, or it's probably a cable line in this case, like uh, the fiber or, or cable television, something like that, um, so that the floats can get under it. It's a little bit silly. Uh, but they're very cool, they're well done. Tonya brings these out for everything, and there's more of the Tonya girls. It's interesting that I don't know of any other time of the year that they have these dancing promotional models uh, like they do for this. Now, you would think in a country with a very big uh, national brewery that, that does a ton of promotional stuff, like their involvement in promotions around the country is huge, but they do not bring out these models for any other event that I'm aware of, uh, except for this. We do see them at like uh, Samana Santa, but they're not in the shorts, they're not out dancing. Um, they wear much more conservative outfits and just hand out uh, sweaters or shoes or hats or, you know, very different thing than, than dancing on the, on the floats. This is the end of the Tonya. This is a lot of floats. It's interesting that they had these different themes uh, of models dancing um, as they come through, very different than we saw in the other parades. But this is like a highlight, like everybody waits for them to come by. It's Because it's the only really organized float, it gets a lot of attention. Not that it wouldn't get a lot of attention, but Tonya is already sponsoring everything. So uh, you can see the, the big Tonya banners as I'm saying it, as they go by, and you can see the Tonya on uh, the, you know, the bar across the street. And then, so it's worth pointing out that the girls from the floats, I think, um, along with what must be hundreds or thousands of additional models that they hired throughout the day ended up at bars all throughout the city. Every bar we saw had two or more Tonya models working in it. And you could, uh, if you bought a Tonya beer, you could take off the, 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 the neck, the paper around the neck and give it to the girls and they would run out in the street and go to a nacho stand and come back and give you nachos. Uh, e you know, even inside restaurants. It was really odd. Um, unfortunately, it had meat in it. So even though I had a Tonya and got one, we were no, no one was able to eat it. Uh, so it went to waste, but neat promotion that they were doing. I'm not sure how people were supposed to know about it though. That's a problem, getting the word out. Like I had no idea you were supposed to do that. And one of the guys that I was with is like, no, just do this. And he handed it to them. And then they brought me food. And I'm like, that's really weird. It was like tapas. It was quite interesting. We saw this in another parade, uh, another Ipico, that big dress that covers the entire horse. That's a cool thing that they do. There was a lot less in Managua of people with the party trucks and party buses. Those we saw for in, in real force in Nagarote more than anywhere 
and was really cool. I would love to do that at some point in the future. There, I did not figure out who this is. It's some store, I think, uh, and they had some dancing models as well. But that was about it. Like this is not normal. Um, it's it's very much just uh, Tonia and then this one other place uh, that decided to do that. You can see how tight this is that everybody's walking along and they've got full-size trucks coming down the street. You can see how close I am. Like, I had to work hard to dodge those tires. And obviously, once they catch you, you're in a lot of trouble. So it was, uh, it's, everything's very tight. Um, and it is not a country in general and certainly not an event uh, known for having very many safeties going on. So if you do attend this, be a bit careful. We did have, and it may actually be this guy right there, um, that he was whipping the horse so much that he lost control of it and it actually backed up and almost fell on me and I didn't know because he was coming backwards uh, and my crew actually grabbed me and pulled me out, no it must not be him, uh, and pulled me out from underneath a horse that was that was starting to fall down right where I was and you can see those are big horses. These are like, I grew up on a horse farm and there were a lot smaller horses than these, they would still really hurt when they fell on you but these would be pretty, pretty bad. Uh, so what happens is um, a lot of people set up, a lot of people come in the afternoon like us uh, but a lot of people also set up very early, 10 o'clock in the morning or noon is really solid. Um, you'll get lunch and start drinking at lunch and people just hang out along the parade route even when nothing's going on and spend the whole day just eating and drinking. Lots of live music, lots of DJs, uh, quite a bit of dancing. It is just a nationwide party. Everyone is together to party all day day and then the parade itself goes for many hours and snakes through the city uh, and here we're in like a big major part of the city but it goes I mean it goes miles and miles and miles and uh, eventually it ends up in the zona Ippo, the zona Ippo which of course Ippos which of course means horse zone uh, so that's logically where it goes that is also however the zona Rosa so it is the big club district so that the, that the parade goes through the club district pretty close to midnight is really interesting. This was actually an advertising float for a bunch of different businesses, very different. Uh, and this is, you know, kind of one of those party uh, things. So we saw this in Nagarote, um, not on this scale, but they weren't advertising anything. It was just like farms and ranches would have an associated uh, party float-ish kind of thing and go through the parade route with their people partying on the float and then the people partying on the side watch the people partying on the floats and vice versa which is actually pretty interesting uh, that there's a moving and non-moving component and then all the people in the street who just move in between things um, it's it's so different it is so hard to explain what it's actually like that you go to these events and you wander through the city just going to you know fast food on the side of the road uh, going to bars bar to bar um, and just hopping throughout the entire day or find a place to camp at uh, and just sit there all day and drink and eat is um, it's fun and different and so Nicaraguan uh, completely utterly different than anything you would see in North America so what we did on this particular day is we we wanted to film as much as we could because there's very little daylight Right, because I always struggle with this in my normal life, is getting enough daylight to film an event is hard. An event like the Ipico that starts at around 3 o'clock in the afternoon means there is a maximum of about two and a half hours. If we were there right as it started and we were not able to be there right as it started, we just had a lot going on. Um, we we're there about half an hour in, maybe an hour, and then you have to find your spot in it, and you gotta get set up and start filming, and you gotta get enough stuff. And it was overcast, which was not helping, so I only had about two hours to work with uh, before it gets too dark to be able to really get anything and th that poses a really big challenge uh, so so we got there in the middle of the afternoon um, and filmed as much as we could and then wanted to go to dinner because we didn't have a chance to do that so we went out to a normal dinner we didn't eat as part of the parade route per se we did eat on the parade route but not at a restaurant that like had a special setup for it or anything most of them do but but not if they're late enough in the route 
and uh, so we hung out and snacked and drank and, and you just get beers or seltzers or bamboo which is like cocktails in a can um, or they make cocktails on the street that's a big thing we'll, we'll show some of that so you can see what it's like um, and you get these big drinks and you just wander the streets and of course there's no open container laws in Nicaragua so you're free to be out in public and this is one of the, the like restaurant bars that sets up and like Tonya builds a lot of these and they were very excited to get to bar. they saw me come up and they're like we're dancing for the show and uh, they were they're having a good time and this is big like people line up on the front of these bars and dance for the crowd and and watch from above and it's a lot of fun and so they're in very uh, desirous positions like people get reservations days ahead of time uh, and pay big covers uh, to get in and be in those particular places along the route and and it's fun because you get filmed and you get to film and uh, uh, it's just it's a neat part of the experience so the uh, uh, the route goes just all day it's an exhausting thing and when the parade is finally wrapping up when you've had enough oh i'm sorry yes and when you're wrapping up the party then shifts to more traditional bars but so there's no open container law so we have these big drinks and we have kansas so whatever and you can just walk the streets all day with it and there's no drunken uh drunken in public uh things right like in the u.s it's illegal to be drunk in public typically intoxicated in public uh but in nicaragua you can be as drunk as you want all normal laws still apply you are expected to not you know steal things from people or do whatever bad thing um, but as long as you're only drunk and being good about it then you're absolutely allowed to be drunk in public why wouldn't you be that makes no sense uh, in the United States it is common that if you're drunk you can use that in a defense oh I stole that thing or I set it on fire it was not my fault I was drunk and so they make being drunk illegal instead so you can't use that as the excuse if you use it as the excuse for one thing then you get caught the other but here uh, you're simply responsible for your actions as normal as you would expect as logical in a, in a functional legal system and uh, being drunk is of course like it is in the entire civilized world completely and utterly legal so it makes for a parade experience that you would not get in in the United States at all uh, because the things that enable this all the advertising of the beer, the sponsors by the beer, the amount of beer and, and seltzers and stuff that they're selling and, the, and mixing drinks on the street. And we're going to talk about that a little bit when we, when we see it. Um, that they're just making cocktails on the street and able to serve so much to so many people so quickly um, and so young because the drinking age is 18, like most of the world. Uh, so there's just a lot of people out there getting a drink and hanging out on the street. It's worth noting in the week that... Uh, this came out and I just happened to be talking on this uh, topic. Of course, you do need to be 18 to be a bartender in Nicaragua, uh, but in the United States, they've just, in a number of places, uh, lowered the bartending age to 14. That just happened to come up this week. We're really shocked about it. We keep hearing about the, the rolling back on child labor in the United States, that they're going pro-child labor while being anti-immigrant labor. It's super weird. No one understands what's going on uh, nothing like that here yes you do have to be an adult to be a bartender uh but and oh here we go we are pouring the drinks right here these you're gonna see these are giant so that is florida Kanye rum uh that they're using as a base that's not what she's holding and then what's called nika mix and these are these brightly colored fruity kind of chemically flavored uh, mixers and I've never actually seen them in the stores I'm sure that they're around right but it's uh, it's common only in these events and you just go up and of course because it's Nicaragua mixers are always with rum it's never vodka never tequila while those are available people would be shocked to do that it's twice the price of rum and it is the local rum distillery that sponsors so many things so it's just it's part of being Nicaraguan is to drink rum or beer or will the seltzers from one or the other uh, brewery or distillery uh, but those because the rum is made in Nicaragua it is one incredibly high quality to reasonably low cost like like we buy it in Nicaragua as cheap or cheaper than low quality rum would typically be in like the United States which of course is also a rum country the US is able to make very good rum but uh, it tends to be a bit more expensive we had wanted to point this guy out he's in there being a security guard right off of the parade route he was so chill all day while this huge party's going on he like absolutely oblivious to the parade happening in front of him uh, but so and 
we were doing this, we got the first drink, and uh, Marcella there from our crew is like, well, I'm going to make a drink. So she actually jumped in and bartended at this bar uh, to make drinks for a few minutes, and uh, we set up the camera. So I have no idea how she talked them into this. Like, so weird. But this is definitely a Nicaragua thing. The U.S. would never allow a random person walking by to be like, hey, can I make the drinks myself? That'll be fun. And then be like, sure, whatever. They would, no, they would be like, that's a liability. We can't do that. You know, it was just weird. Um, but here, yeah, she's just like, I, I want to try this. And they're like, have at it, <laughs> right? Of course she paid for it um, but, and bought the drink like anything else. They were appreciative of a quick break. And uh, she practiced her bartending skills. Uh, but they were pretty tasty. They were not, they're not the best. The Deacon mix is rather simple and you're just throwing rum in some punch. It's fine, like, and it's colorful and it looks good and it's fun to, to walk down the street with a giant drink. And it's loaded with ice, so it's not nearly as big as it looks. Uh, and it does stay cold fairly well. So that's fine, but it waters down a lot really quickly. We were lucky that it was not that hot. It was probably no more than 90 degrees. It was comfortable for doing this parade. It was only that we got sweaty at all because we had hats on, and we were dressed up, we were carrying cameras. I had the crossbody bag, carrying extra camera gear. That stuff adds up and starts to make you warm uh, just because you're doing that. But overall, it was a great day for the, the Ipico. That, that one's mine, so uh, that's me taking it there. Uh, the whole idea of the just going down on the street, the streets and drinking um, is so different, so different than the U.S. experience where you can go to parades and do things like that, but it's done by going to beer tents uh, inside of fairgrounds quite often, something like that too. It's a party, it's a lot of drinking, and giant cocktails in the street are the way to go. So this is Florida Kanye in Nika Mix. Just like kind of Kool-Aid-ish flavoring. Let's go look at some horsies. So this is a really major cultural event. If you're around for any of these, I really recommend you check it out. It is fun. There's lots of things like it. The Ipico is pretty unique as far as just the, the horses and everything, but parades and similar processions and holiday stuff, a lot of fun in Nicaragua. They really take it seriously. So the way that this works is you do this parade all throughout the day, and then you can stay in these places that I showed, like where they were dancing with these big uh, setup um, stages. Uh, but what a lot of people do is uh, move to more traditional bars. Now what we did is we went to dinner at Pane y Vino, had a really nice normal dinner, and then walked to the Zona Rosa. Actually walked to our hotel, dropped off all of our stuff because it was right there, and then walked into the Zona Rosa. Uh, main area, which is just tons of giant bars, the biggest in the country, with enormous additional bar uh, makeshift structures put out in front. I'm going to show these in a second. And they have just epic parties. Now, I had to turn the audio way down because we'll get hit with, with copyright notices if we don't. But I want you to see just what this party looks like. And this is, so this is from one of these platforms overlooking the main street in the Zona Rosa. And this is, the parade is still going. This is like 11, 11.30 at night and they came through and all the Tonya girls are still dancing. I'm not gonna show them here, they're on the shorts and stuff, you've already seen them, but they're, they're still dancing and coming through this zone. You can see the other bars across the street, how busy they are coming up on midnight. And this is our crew dancing at El Patron, which is really busy. And this was with a hundred cord cover to get in. So that's $3 to get in at this particular party on a Tuesday night. And that group of dancing people goes deep in every direction. There were so many people. Remember to like and subscribe if you want to support the channel. Hit us up at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott L. Miller. Helps make it possible for us to come out and do events like this and bring them to you. If you're looking for assistance with relocation, shoot us an email, info at relocatenicaragua.com, and I will see all of you tomorrow.